Basketball fans, welcome into Raptors today. We've got the crew together, Sherm Hamilton, Javon Shepard. But right now, it's all about Masai Ujiri, who finally spoke to the media after the Pascal Siakam trade. He addressed the fans. He addressed everyone's concerns. So we hand you off to the boss himself, the president of the Toronto Raptors, Masai Ujiri. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. Um, it's a tough couple of weeks for us uh, here um, with uh, the trades we've made, uh, losing... Um, uh, the players, Pascal Siakam, OG Ananobi, uh, Precious Achua, and Malachi Flynn. Um, obviously, we know what these players meant uh, to our program. Uh, incredible, incredible human beings. Um, incredible character. Um, incredible players and what they brought to our franchise. Um, championship players. Um, obviously, you guys, um, you know, my relationships with, with, with these guys and how hard um, this is. And I know how hard it is, uh, how hard it's been for them too. Um, yesterday with Pascal, um, incredibly difficult, but um, we're excited. We're also excited about the new direction of the of the team. So, um, with that, I, I just wanted to say thank you to them and everything they bring. They've brought uh, to this program. Eric, you know, um, I think the lines of communication uh, in the summer were not that great. You know, like just because, yeah, sometimes I don't have answers. You know, like and sometimes the answer that I've given you, you know, like is is the same answer that I'm going to give you, you know, like the next time I speak to you. But based on my relationship, you know, like Pascal deserved that I even gave him, you know, like the over communication, you know, like which I didn't. And I apologized to him, you know, for it. I apologized to him before the season uh, started and, um, and uh, I apologized to him again. I know um, uh, recently, so um, yeah, that part I'm not, yeah, I'm not particularly proud of, you know. Like, but there are so many things in our business that yeah, bring about uh, this type of um, yeah, the, this this type of communication or non-communication. Uh, and um, I go back again to say, there's there's nobody in this world i don't know you know like outside his close family his mom his um his brothers and uh yeah that guy is he's right here so I, when you think about pascal in 10 20 years from now what are you going to think about is there a moment that st stands out to you when you think about him yeah two moments Yeah. Yeah, two African guys that won a championship. I share that with him. And and I think of his dad and um Pascal at Basketball Without Borders. A lot of people don't know that um Pascal came to Basketball Without Borders in South Africa. Um, he had been admitted into pastoral school in Cameroon, and he only came to Basketball Without Borders to see his sister, who lived in South Africa. And he was going to go back and go back to pas pastoral school. And all NBA, all All-Star, all everything, championship, and it's not stereotype championship of African waving the flag on the bench, yeah, scoring, contributing, yeah, doing everything you know uh, that you can think of. Uh, that's again, I say to you guys that 
that guy's success is my success, no matter where he is. If you don't know by now, a Masai Ujiri press conference is must-see TV. Um, one of the most compelling speakers I've ever seen in the sports world. But let's get into it. He addressed so many different things. Sherm, I'll start with you. When you were watching the press conference, which of the 20 or 50 amazing things he said stuck out to you? Well, it's interesting to see that a man who has been through so much and done so much business that there's still that emotional connection yeah. to, to the things that he has to do. And it's refreshing, too, because sometimes we can get lost in the business of it and the numbers and just kind of think that it's just these hard, cold decisions. But it was good to hear Masai again explain the gravity of the decisions that he made and how it impacted him and and the kind of emotional turmoil he went through some of those things. Um, I, I think when you build a, a championship franchise, there becomes bonds that will never be broken. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't like people, you're connected for life. Mm -hmm. And I think what Masai is saying, he actually liked all of these people, cared about them deeply, and having to to make moves that would change the courses of their career, that would change the courses of their interaction with each other. And all of a sudden now, coaches and players are pulling in a different direction. They're trying to beat you. That's a unique dynamic, but understanding the value of building something with people and still respecting and honoring what they've brought to the table, even though you've had to move them on, it's a dynamic that we really can't understand, and, and he, I thought, did a good job of, of really allowing us a sneak peek into the inside workings of how that goes down. I, you know, I think what I like about, you know, Masai's presser there is the, the humanity side, the, the honesty, and just giving some insight into, you know, the interpersonal side of, you know, a team unit. Uh, and I think a lot of times we get lost in thinking this thing is so transactional and everybody is overly critical. You go on NBA.com and everybody looks up these counting stats and, you know, they're, they're playing their fantasy GM roles. And the trade it, machine, the one of the trade machine, right? to happen ever. <laughs> but you look at that relationship right there and these guys get drafted so young, right? Pascal, you know, he lost his father young. Uh, even look at OG, he lost his father last year as well. Um, and even a Fred, you know, lost his father really young. And, you draft Masai drafts these guys, and he's not just the the president of the team. He yeah. becomes a a father figure mm -hmm. to those guys. So you watch them grow. They're drafted young, nineteen twenty, and you're not only seeing them develop as basketball players, but you're seeing them develop as men, right? And when he talks about giving these guys chances and so forth, giving that team chances, it's these are actually my my my. I look at them as my kids, right? And we, we're all fathers here. We we give our kids chances. We want to see them do well. And I, that spoke to that side of it that we often don't acknowledge. And even for, you know, a Pascal, you know, he he learned how to drive here in Toronto. <laughs> right? He got his license here in Toronto with the Raptors organization. With the Raptors helping. organization, so it's far bigger than than just the basketball side. And winning is one thing, but the off court, the interactions, the exchanges, the trust. Um, and when when Masai talks about the brotherhood, the NBA being a brotherhood, the reality is. Nobody, these guys have their families, they have their friends, but nobody lives the experiences that they do, right? It's it's only the people that in that locker room that really understand the we day-to-day -day pressures. Apart. You know, everybody looks at it from the outside, so I think... They're just around the their teammates there. more than their family yeah. Yeah. during the season. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, so that honesty there spoke volumes to, no, this, it's not just transactional. There's more to building this than, you know, just move. They're not just stocks. Yeah, and... Um, listen, the media had their moment finally because we know that Masai has been, you know, his feet have been fell to the fell to the fire. They've been calling for a direction for this organization. The rumors about Pascal being traded have been going on for weeks and weeks. Finally pulled the trigger. Your impressions of what the Raptors got back in the trade and what this says about the direction moving forward, Shep? You know, I think you, you get back three firsts. Yeah. And, you know, some people may say it's underwhelming, but the reality is, the, the number of the picks don't matter anymore. Um, it's more, and I think the most important thing is whether you're utilizing, you know, those picks or whether you're packaging them and getting players, the, the minutes that guys are going to be playing here matters more than anything. The right? guys that are on the roster, the young guys. That are on the roster that you're going to be bringing in, whatever the case may be, because that's when you're, you're developing. That's when you're growing. That's where they get the chance to express themselves. And you look at, you know, even last year's draft, you have... Um, Grady? 
Grady, Grady for the Raptors, but Keontae George for Utah. Like mm-hmm. a lot of these guys that are having success in the NBA right now, they're drafted outside of the lottery. Um, Jaime Jaquez in, in Miami. So where those picks fall doesn't really matter anymore. It's more the opportunity that the players are going to get. Young players, whether they're on your team right now, or young players that are coming in that you draft, opportunity presents itself and they get those minutes to play, get those minutes to develop. That's more important than anything. And then situation opens up and then you get you see guys flourish. So you freeing know, up minutes. Freeing up minutes. Okay. Yeah, you're trying to balance things. I mean, the deal with New York created a now impact and a future impact with two players who are going to produce now in, in Barrett and uh, quickly. And then that could be part of your future moving forward. This deal presented different options. Yeah. So now this deal presented some some what I call flexibility, flexibility yeah. and the ability to, to make moves with this move. And and I think that the balance that is being struck here, and it's tough to do, and Masai has done a great job of this, is understanding where you want to go, but understanding the time frame to get there. And I think what he's been able to do with all the trades is package a core together now that he can build around and then have enough assets, whether it be players, contracts, or picks, that he can go ahead now and say, how do I kind of build in around this core and, and make this core more complete so that it can develop at the pace they need to develop at while winning? So the flexibility is the biggest thing that I think Masai did a great job with this deal with Pascal. And people look at it and say, well, Pascal is a $35 million player and you didn't get that back. Well, what you got is the ability to build a team. And that to me is more important at this juncture in this franchise's journey. Current Raptor buzzwords, patience and flexibility. You guys be patient with us. We'll be back after the break with more Raptors today. 